Happy holidays, PPLers. We're here for our final edition of PPL Live, bringing you here to Pantheon Cup 9. We are here at our climax of our season. The height of our season, we have our two championship contenders set who've emerged from the final four to make up the final two, the finalists in the PPL in the 2017 season. In the number four seed, the Gaff Attack versus the number three seeded Big C's Comeback Kids. This is a great matchup. Uh, this is a matchup of two teams who have, um, you know, um, you know, uh, always been in the hunt for the last couple of years. Uh, the Gaff did have a lot of struggles last year and, uh, you know, came up again this year. Uh, but Big C's has been a team that was hovering around that that fifth seed, uh, couldn't quite crack the uh, final four and finally made it. And uh, looks like, uh, you know, maybe, maybe a time where he can um, – exercise some demons and uh, uh, bring a championship uh, to a very, very young franchise. Uh, and let's start with the number three seed, Big C's Comeback Kids. Uh, very, very, very impressive uh, season so far. I mean, even with even without a victory in Pantheon Cup 9, I think that Big C's had a very impressive season. I think there's no doubt about that. Um, it all started with their first pick in their draft, which was uh, Deshaun Watson. Um a guy who 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 showed to be you know worth that pick, um, at that situation, especially considering that Big C's, uh, you know, needed quarterback and needed some high scoring players, and Deshaun uh, really gave them um, a spark early on. He was a guy that um, definitely, um, you know, they should be given a lot of credit for. And their ne next pick was Evan Ingram, so those two picks are 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 are, are what the PPL are all about. It's a dynasty. And uh, Big C's looks like uh, they could be on the cusp of uh, building one, um, especially if they're able to bring home Pantheon Cup 9 and uh, get this big victory. Um, but looking forward throughout the season, uh, these guys, you know, they were they were battle tested and uh, they showed up every week and it wasn't with the usual suspects. I mean, this was a team, you know, that, you know, uh, really put itself together, you know, you know, glue, nails and you know, all kinds of stuff, wood, you know, whatever pieces Big C's could find, um, he plugged and played them, and it was beneficial for him. I think this was probably uh, the most impressive single-season performance in PPL history. I don't think it's even close. Um, the plug and plays throughout the season were highly impressive. I mean, you go from guys like Marquise Goodwin, uh, you know, to Kenyon Drake. I mean, currently, those are guys that he's been depending on. Um, before that, I mean, he plugged and played uh, Matthew Stafford. Uh, he plugged and played Case Keenum. This was after the Deshaun Watson injury. Uh, Samaje Perrine even uh, had a, an audition for Big C's. Uh, Frank Gore um, played and was even released this year. So, I mean, this guy was not dependent on any one player. I mean, even Devonta Freeman, uh, the mainstay of Big C's comeback kids, uh, had an up-and-down season. I mean, he's still a, a pretty good back, a top back and a top offense. But he um, was not the guy uh, that he's been in past years, and uh, he even had a few injuries. So Big C's, I mean, he, he he's um, really done it his way. Um, even at wide receiver, uh, I mean, he's had all kinds of guys in the lineup who've blown up for him. Um, Jarvis Landry, of course, and Michael Crabtree are consistent mainstays at wide receiver, so he did have those guys uh, to depend on, and he's going to have them to depend on in the Pantheon Cup. But, I mean, it didn't matter. Every week, Big C's found a way to win. Uh, not every week, but most weeks, Big C's found a way to win. And, I mean, it was highly impressive, and he, he's uh, highly deserving of his place in Pantheon in Pantheon Cup 9. Uh, even in uh, the Final Four matchup, let's get to that. I mean, uh, th those were some great matchups. Um, I was very impressed. I think Big C's had the most impressive performance of the Final Four, just based on the fact that he was down 40 points. Going into that final week, I mean, he really made a few boo boos in that uh, first uh, matchup, benching Jarvis Landry, uh, you know, uh, starting uh, Josh McCown against the Denver defense, just doing you know uh, boneheaded decisions that likely should have cost him the matchup. But I mean, uh, he came back in kind in the second um, half of that matchup, putting up 180 points. I think that was the season high, uh, even throughout the regular season. So. Uh, big C's got uh, the big time performance uh, at the most desperate time, um, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, really uh, stunned ATG. I thought I thought ATG had that. I thought they were on their way back to the Pantheon Cup. Um, but, you know, Big C's had other plans in mind. 
and and is setting up a um um you know an, an ironic matchup uh with the number four seeded gaff because this was the this was the guy uh big c's was the 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 uh this is the matchup basically that coach gate happened so um it, it's pretty interesting that this matchup is the matchup of pantheon cup nine and that the gaff after uh you know suffering this the uh sanctions for coach gate finds himself in the pantheon cup against the team that he um you know perpetrated you know fraudulent activity against so uh, it's going to be uh, a great matchup. Uh, and I mean, I guess that kind of makes Big C's a, a sentimental favorite um, in a sense, you know, uh, you know, justice or, you know, the football gods, whatever you want to call it. But then again, you got to look at the number four seat, the gaff. I mean, you're looking at a powerhouse team um, as far as scoring goes. Uh, they only went seven and six. They weren't very um, impressive as far as uh, getting wins. Um, it seems like uh, they had their ups and downs throughout the season, but they were the number two scoring team. So teams came to play against them at certain points, and then at certain points they just ran out of gas. Uh, but in their matchup with the Argonauts in uh, the uh, Final Four, they really, really flexed their muscle. Um, they had a big 156-point um, outburst um, in the final week uh, to keep that lead and uh, you know to pretty much uh, put it to rest and uh, go back to the Pantheon Cup. And this is their first Pantheon Cup appearance since Pantheon Cup 2, so um, this is it's been a long time coming for the gaff. It's been... Um, about seven seasons and uh they they've got a team that looks like uh they're poised to win it um i'm looking at guys like um um zach ertz and um you know demarius thomas uh even made a cameo um of, of course deandre hopkins is probably the main guy and todd Gurley. those are two you know those are two guys that have been on the gaff attack uh that he drafted uh years ago so those are guys that were definitely um consistent pieces Ertz uh was a part of uh, this year's acquisitions and um the other guys uh you know made a uh, consistent plays guys like Kirk Cousins did all right Matthew Stafford uh was uh, actually a part of a, a fortunate uh free agent acquisition uh Big C's comeback kids probably could have used Stafford in that round uh so uh Stafford being back on the on the gaff was a, a fortunate bounce in their favor uh, but they did a good job, I thought, uh, consolidating that Eagles offense throughout the season. That was the top one of the top fantasy offenses to have, and uh, the Gaff really took advantage of that. Um, looking at Alshon Jeffrey and Zach Ertz uh, stats throughout the season, and they were uh, two of the more dependable uh, pieces to uh, have in play uh, throughout. And uh, I uh, also gave a lot of credit for the um, uh, kicker and uh, defensive plays throughout the season, the number one defense and kicker. Uh, with uh, the Jaguars defense and uh, Greg Zerline, who actually is injured now. Um, those were good plays. Those were uh, fantastic plays, actually, and they kept the gaff attack um, rolling. Of course, you would be remiss to not mention that this team did auto-draft. Um, so this, this was uh, probably one of the best teams they've ever assembled. And you got to give uh, the auto-draft strategy. I don't know if it was a strategy or if it was just how the, how it went down, but you got to give it credit because it did help the gaff get to this point. But you got to give credit where it's due. They they plugged and played throughout the season. They made the decisions, and they find themselves, um, you know, uh, in a championship level against a team uh, that is an Omega Conference rival. Uh, this is a great matchup because this is the, actually the second time the Omega Conference has had um, the uh, Pantheon Cup to themselves. Uh, Patty's Twins versus Appease the Gods in Pantheon Cup 7 uh, was actually the last time this happened. And this is also uh, one of the few times that two teams that were not conference champions are meeting in the Pantheon Cup. Uh, that happened uh, with the, uh, that also happened in that Pantheon Cup 7 and Pantheon Cup 5 when the Argonauts um, played, um, the United Players, the Destroyers. Uh, but the Gaff had a great year. Uh, Big C's had a great year. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see who wins this Pantheon Cup. Um, you know, the way history um, will write this story, um, both teams um, are deserving, um, especially, uh, you know, I got to say Big C's comeback kids uh, is very deserving uh, just based on the fact that, you know, no one just expected them to be in this position uh, even when the playoffs started. So um, uh, I can't really decide who's going to win this matchup. The gaff looks like it should be easy. Uh, but studs sometimes do sit in these late games or, you know, m you know, get pulled early uh, based on uh, the risk of injury. So you never know what can actually happen uh, with um, this matchup. And, and the kids have a lot of guys who who could eat in the last uh, week or, 
last two weeks of the season. So I'm not going to pick the matchup. It's two two weeks long. It, anything can happen as we saw these last two weeks over the final four. Uh, but good luck to both teams. Um, uh, congratulations on making it to Pantheon Cup nine. Uh, we'll crown a new champion. And uh, congratulations. May the odds be ever in you guys' favor. Have a happy holiday season. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas and all of the above uh, for whatever you guys uh, believe in. But uh, good luck in the Pantheon Cup. And uh, have a great uh, off season and see you guys next season. Mm -hmm.